Hi, this is Rhonda Finfrock of Fruitful Life Studio. Today I'm in my studio and I'm supposed to be finishing this dresser right behind me. I'm also supposed to be finishing up on this table behind me that I started months ago. I need to do some more hand painting on it uh, before I finish it up. That's not what I'm doing. I'm also supposed to be finishing up this piece here hand painting some bronze paint on the decor transfer, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Then what am I doing, you might ask? Well, <laughs> I'm playing with my new products that I'm so excited about. I've been wanting to create some bangles using my new IOD first generation molds. I thought this would be a really cool mold for a bangle bracelet. I think this one is gonna work really well. I have another set. The labels. I think this would be really cool as well as this one. I ordered some wooden bangles off of Amazon, but they're not here yet. And I can't stand it. I need to get started. So what I decided to do is go around my house and see what I could use to practice. So first I thought of tape rolls. And the tape rolls were a little big for my hand. Although I like the width, they're a little big. I like how sturdy they are. So maybe someone with a little bit larger wrist could wear them. Could be perfect. Then I thought a ribbon. Oh, so I started going through my ribbon and I found this, which I think is pretty much the perfect size for my wrist. The type of glue you use to glue on the molds depends on what is the product you're using. Is it air dry clay or is it um, two part resin? So I've got air dry clay and cardboard. So the glue I'm using is Gorilla Wood Glue. So I just get a little bit on my plate. Get a little moisture going on. I like to mix a little water in there. gently all the edges and then decide where you want to put it put it right here and I don't worry too much if there's a little glue oozing out. I clean it up with my brush. You want to be really gentle. I impressed the design before I glued it on. And I think it is a very subtle impression. This one, I'm going to try to glue on the strip of clay and then emboss it or impress it. And let's see if it makes a difference. So again, I glued, I taped these tongue depressors about the same width as this circle, cardboard. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a guide to get me started. This time I'm going to use this one here, but I, instead of cutting the plastic and keeping it on the backing, I'm going to take it off the backing 
I'm wondering if that will help the impression or help me align it. It may seem like you're gonna break these, but you won't. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna dust this with the cornstarch. So I don't want the clay sticking into the impression, so I'm gonna get it nice and loaded up here. So again, the first time I made the impressions and then glued it on, but with this time I'm just centering the stamp border as I go around and it's making a much clearer impression and I'm, I'm being pretty firm with it, pressing it into the clay. Okay, I see it overlapped, so I'm going to come up can see the impression that it made. That's going to look cool. On top of this, I'm going to try out this mold right here because I think that impression will be a good turquoise looking piece. And this is from another set of first generation IOD molds. So you just scoop it out, a ratio of one-to-one -one paint. So I'm going to use Mermaid's Tail. That should be plenty. Mix it up until it's like a cake batter or frosting. Okay, so look at that color. I'm gonna take the bracelets that I made without the mold on the side. And I'm gonna dab it on. You want those peaks to form. Sorry about that the lighting right now. The sun's going down. It's in my window. It's beautiful. It feels really good. So you want those peaks to form. As the paint is drying, you're going to take your brush and you're just going to flatten out those peaks that have formed. While the weathered wood paint is still wet, I'm taking the Summer Crush and just pouncing it randomly. I want to build that dimension. I like the look of the added apothecary, so I decided to just add a bit to all of them. This one I'm kind of dry brushing it on, meaning just not getting in every crevice. We'll see what that, what that does. The great thing about DIY paint and the salt wash, the ingredients are natural. Nothing in it will harm you. So even though I'm creating a lot of dust here when I'm sanding back the salt wash layer or I'm sanding back the paint to reveal the salt wash, I never worry because everything in these products are natural and safe. I've always loved the look of turquoise. So the next step 
For my bangle bracelets, I am going to be painting them with some old 57. So I'm just squirting out a bit of old 57. And I'm using my water girl water bottle, also from the turquoise iris. Again, I'll put the link below. These are amazing. Um, just, they have so many uses. So I always like to use a little water with my brush when I'm doing detail work and roll it and then get just a little bit of paint and roll it so you have that nice tip. And I'm just going to work around getting as close to the rim as I can, but knowing that I'm also gonna be using patina on this, so if I make little mistakes, it's really not gonna notice. So now I'm taking Big Top, which is a sealer and finisher, and I'm going to just seal over my faux turquoise. And let that dry. It will make it a shiny sealed finish. I'll probably go over them two times. Now for the raised parts of this impressed border, I'm gonna go very lightly, just a very soft touch. So again, I'm working on the edges of these bangles. That way when you're seeing the edge, you don't think of cardboard tube. <laughs> You think of metallic, precious metals. So this I think was my favorite bracelet. I just love how it looks so far. I love that that actually looks like turquoise. I know it's in a bright light, but when it's in a real light, it just looks, just looks kind of real. <laughs> so my last step taking the shipwrecked wax and I am just going to get it in all the little crevices. Now that little turquoise piece, that faux turquoise piece will be fine because I sealed it with big top so I can just wipe that right away and it will go back to its original original color so I'm just gonna kind of like wipe with a shop towel a little paper towel and in all oh, the salt wax the salt wash as you can see all the little places where the salt wash was sanded back is just filling that in so beautifully. And the sun is setting, so I have on some, some work lights, but I will be photographing this outside so you can really see it in the natural light and how beautiful it is. So that's it. That's all you do, wipe it back. Now, I'll buff it again. In a bit, when the wax sets, I'll buff it again by rubbing it. I wanna make sure all the wax is off of my little faux stone there.
Thanks for watching my free tutorial. I will put all the links below if you want to purchase any of the items that you saw. I appreciate likes and shares as I grow my new business and have a great day.